Let me call myself, for the present, William Wilson. For the sake of the story I'm about to tell, my appellation is of no importance. The tale I'm about to reveal is how I suddenly and completely turned to evil. My earliest recollections of a school life are connected with a large, rambling, Elizabethan house in a misty-looking village of England. But the house, how quaint an old building was this. There was really no end to its windings, to its incomprehensible subdivisions. In this schoolhouse, I discovered that the imperiousness of my disposition soon rendered me a marked character among my schoolmates, and by slow but natural progression gave me a superiority over all not greatly older than myself. However, there was one exception. I discovered a scholar with the same Christian and surname as myself. I later found out that he was born on the 19th of January, 1813, and this is a somewhat remarkable coincidence for the day is precisely that of my own nativity. It should be noted, however, that he is of no relation to my family, but if we had been brothers, we must have been twins. My dress, it was an easy matter to copy. My gait and general manner were, without difficulty, imitated. In spite of his constitutional defect, even my voice did not escape him and his singular whisper. It grew the very echo of my own. William Wilson. Yet this superiority, even this equality, was in truth acknowledged by no one but myself. Our associates, by some unaccountable blindness, seemed not even to suspect it. I didn't like the idea of someone being equal, or even superior to me. It started out as friendly competition and even practical jokes. But I got sick of losing to him. One night, about the close of my fifth year at school, finding everyone wrapped in sleep, I arose from bed. I then made my way to my antagonist's room. I looked, and in numbness, Iciness of feeling instantly pervaded my frame. My breast heaved, my knees tottered, my whole spirit became possessed with an objectless yet intolerable horror. Gasping for breath, I lowered the lamp in still near proximity to his face. The same name, the same contour person, the same day of arrival at the academy. And then his dogged and meaningless imitation of my gait, my voice, my habits, and my manner? Was it in truth within the bounds of human possibility that what I now saw was the result merely of the habitual practice of this sarcastic imitation? I left the halls of that old academy never to return again. In the next few months, I was at home. The longer I spent away from that dreaded old academy, the easier it was to forget. The truth, the tragedy of the drama was no more. <laughs> yes, I agree. Well, here's to the celebration. William, let's get you at the door. Come get in. I grew perfectly sober in an instant. The singular, low, hissing utterance, and above all, the character, the tone, the key of those few simple and familiar, yet whispered syllables, came with a thousand thronging memories of bygone days.
Before I could recover the use of my senses, he was gone. After my encounter with my old rival, I could no longer remain at Eton and decided to transfer to Oxford. At Oxford, I became acquainted with a man named Glendening. I frequently engaged him in play and decided, with the gambler's usual art, to let him win considerable sums. He began to believe he could beat me. However, I was fully in control and would not let this happen. In a very short period, he had become my debtor to a large amount, but he did precisely what I had been coolly anticipating. He proposed to double our already extravagant stakes. Gentlemen, you are unaware of the true character of the man who has tonight won a large sum of money from Lord Glendening. Please examine the inside of the cuff of his sleeve. So Wilson, this is your property. I think you've overstayed your welcome. I hope you see the necessity of leaving Oxford. Leave my chambers at once. The next morning, ear dawn of day, I commenced a hurried journey from Oxford to Europe in a perfect agony of horror and of shame. Yet my evil destiny pursued me everywhere I went. Paris, Vienna, Berlin, Moscow. I was never safe. A few months later, I attended a masquerade ball in Rome. I left the ball went upstairs to have a moment to myself. Conquered and I yield, yet henceforth art thou also dead, dead to the world, to heaven, and to hope. In me didst thou exist, and in my death see by this image, which is thine own, how utterly thou hast murdered thyself.